Okay. So I've been asked, why do you carry such a big pack? I mean, all you do is day hikes. And then I've also then been asked, what is in your pack? So let's get that covered. I think it would be a good idea to tell a story where I come from to explain why I prepare the way that I do. When I was 14 years old, I started rock climbing. I became an instructor pretty quick and then got involved with the mountain rescue team. It was uh, primarily a, a technical, vertical, high angle type rescue team. It kept me busy when I was a kid. I was always at a practice or a meeting or a rescue when I was a young teenager. Definitely kept me off the streets. And one thing that I um, learned and it's so valuable. Um, I learned that I never wanted those things to happen to me. Now, experience is a big part of it for sure. Um, experience, um, you learn a lot with experience. And, and that helps get yourself uh, you know, prepared and ready for whatever trip you're gonna do. The other thing is just being prepared in general. I notice that a lot of times the folks you know, may be inexperienced, but also just so unprepared. And that was majority of the rescues that we were on. So let me just run through the packs first so you can see what I use. This first one's just a little tiny thing. It's basically worthless. I might throw a camera in here and walk a mile. But these little packs, um, these are not four or five or six or eight or ten mile packs. I mean, they're just, they, they're not for that. Now, if you're somebody who goes super light and you run down the canyon and all that, and you know, I mean, um, that's your prerogative, but you won't be prepared. This is what I carry most of the time. All three of these other packs that I'm going to talk about are Ospreys. This one is uh, the 28. And this is the one I'll unpack for you so you can see what I carry. This pack is my mainstay of, uh, you know, two to three, up to 10 miles. Maybe I can uh, get everything in here depending on, you know, what the weather's going to be. The next one is the Osprey 38. This is loaded up to go ice climbing. The reason that I'll carry this on a day hike would be if I'm going to go, you know, maybe 10 to 15 miles. And really the only thing that is added to this pack would be a Gore-Tex down jacket. Makes it a little bit more comfortable if you do get stuck out. And uh, some more water, maybe a little bit more food. And then lastly, this one, I carried this one for a long time. This is a 50. Now, I never filled this up. What uh, my back bothers me from time to time, and what I got it for was the suspension system. If you have any type of back trouble, um, this really, really helps a lot. It just hugs you. You can put it on your shoulders, get the weight on your waist, and you can do some of that with these other packs, but it's not as elaborate of a su suspension system as this is. So why? Um, why am I so afraid of this uh, unexpected night out? I mean, I, you know, I'm not paranoid, I promise. It's just happened a few times, and to make it more comfortable, um, it's nice to be prepared for that. So that is what I prepare for. Now, two times in Southern Utah, we've had people we were with break their leg. And if you break your leg, even a mile or two from the car, um, it can be just as, it may as well be 200 miles. You're not going anywhere. So can you just sit down and tough it out and be comfortable for a night? Because most likely it's going to take uh, you know, it's going to take some time to get 
uh, group of people, a rescue team together, uh, a helicopter dispatched if it's necessary, and so on. So you want to be able to um, fend for yourself. So let me get out my main stay pack here and I'll unpack it for you and we'll take a look at uh, what I got in there. All right, let's get this bad boy up here. The first thing is a water bottle. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, where's your Where's your rubber hose? You know, it's like I don't do the rubber hose thing. I'm sorry. I just I I can't I can't do it. Um, these old water bottles are um, they're flexible. They're bomb proof. You can throw them off a cliff and nothing will happen. They're wide mouth, so they fit. Like if you need to get water out from under a spring or a seeping drip, you can do it with this put ice cubes in it and so on, put water in it and freeze it and it's so flexible that it won't rupture or break. I always like to know how much water that I have in those bags. And people I've walked with, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody take it out and check and see where they're at with it. Maybe they do and I'm not looking, but I wanna know what I have. I think the water thing, and I'm not saying that water isn't important, it certainly is, but I think it's overdone. I think uh, I was in Zion and there was a sign at this trailhead and the trail's not very long, a couple miles or something. You need to have one gallon of water. I thought, oh my goodness. When uh, we were climbing the big walls in Yosemite when I was young, uh, it was two quarts per man per day and we didn't die. And we really exerted ourselves and at times it got very hot. So I'm, uh, I'm not a big fan of the hose thing. When I get back to that car, I want to make sure that I have some water left and I want to pace myself with my consumption. Uh, one of, an example of that is, uh, let's say we're down in a canyon together and we're gonna walk out of this canyon in a typically you know, 500, 600 foot pull. So we head up. And, um, you know, your mouth is going to get dry because you're breathing. I mean, you're breathing hard. It doesn't mean that you're thirsty. It means your mouth is dry. And so, if you got one of those hoses, you'll just be sucking down that water like, you'll be so waterlogged by the time you get to the top, you're going to need a canoe to get back to the car. So, I usually will stop at the top of the long pole and sit down for a little bit. And uh, lo and behold, I only need a, a little swallow or two of water and I'm good to go. So anyway, that's my take on water. I'm not saying it's not important. It is. Okay, the next thing. I have this uh, Patagonia Cinchilla Snap Tea in a waterproof little bag here. And this is what I would, you know, I use it to layer up during the day, but it's one of the things that I would use if I need to spend the night. This is one of the additional things I'll have with me, plus my other clothes. Um, let's see what this is. Oh yeah. And uh, this will sound crazy. It goes along with this cinchilla is a rain gear. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a sunshiny day or not. This, uh, this rain gear comes along. And here's why. If you've ever walked in rain gear, you know how warm it can be. You almost sweat more on the inside than maybe get more wet from the sweat than the rain. And a question that I'll ask just right up front, I will, like we're going out walking and the forecast isn't good and it's going to rain. And so I'll ask maybe somebody I'm with, hey, you got your rain gear, right? Oh yeah, I got a jacket or I got a poncho. I don't know about you guys, but my legs get wet too. When it's raining, especially when it's blowing and the rain going horizontal up on the rim of a canyon, you can get soaked. 
um, just so you know, you need a rain jacket and rain pants. So I'll use this again for um, if, if I do have to uh, spend time out there and it gets cold at night, um, it's one of the things that I'll add to um, help keep warm and it works really well. And I know that because I've had to do it a few times and it's a, it's a good little system. Okay, the other thing is the first aid kit. I have two of them. This one is my small one for the short three, four mile hike. And this is when I'm going to do something more serious. This one has, uh, you know, the sewing kit in it, a flint and steel. It has all kinds of band-aids. Um, just, it's a more elaborate kit. And this is always in no matter what. It's kind of a stripped down version of this. And two of the things that I noticed right on top is uh, Bic lighters. And the flint and steel is kind of, you need to really learn how to use that to start a fire. But a couple of Bic lighters, even if wood is wet, you can go back and forth between the two lighters. Bic lighters are super important. I've had to use that a few times too. And um, we have a uh, device called the InReach Explorer Plus, I think it is. And um, I can text through the satellites. It's also a GPS, but I can text through the satellites. It has SOS capability. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. And so what I've done is since I don't use it all the time, it's easy to forget how to use it. So I made myself some notes so if I ever need to send a text, I can do so and um, I don't have to really remember how to do it. One thing that I will mention and tell you a quick story, we were up in a place called Cedar Mesa and we were driving down Snow Flat Road. This was quite a while ago. And there was, uh, we could see two people walking towards us and two people walking away from us as we came over a rise in the track. And so when we got to the two people, I so, said, you guys okay? You need some help? You know, what's going on? And they said, yeah, we do need some help. We can't find our car. <laughs> and one of the people we're with is a diabetic and doesn't have his insulin. It's in the car. If you have a medical condition, take the stuff with you. Have your medication in case you have to spend a night or two out for any reason. And it's not just if there's, uh, you know, an accident. And what if it rains really hard and you're on the opposite side of the canyon and there's a flash flood and you just don't get back for the night? You need your, you know, blood pressure medicine or your insulin or, you know, there's a host of things that all of us may or may not need. But the but have this stuff with you. It's, it's vitally important. Uh, it's a, just another part of being prepared. To talk a little bit more about the inReach, the same situation, we were up at a place called Ice Lake. There'll be a link to the video at the end of this. And a lady didn't have her medication and she was down for the count and it was getting close to dark was getting extremely cold and they were pretty unprepared and um, we hit the SOS on this thing and it worked like a champ. So when you press that SOS, the somebody at a Garmin office texts you and asks what's going on. Uh, they have your coordinates but you know, what's the situation? Then they forward it to the local sheriff. I think it was in Silverton. Then the sheriff texts us. And then next thing you know, the paramedics and the first responders are texting us. I mean, that, it's worth its weight in gold. Absolutely unbelievable. The, the people were so nice too. I mean, so to make a long story short, a helicopter was dispatched and the airlifted the lady out and it had a happy ending. Um, so this medication thing is, is a big deal. What else? I got a gloves and I got a hat. Um, again, you'll say, well, it's going to be 75 degrees today. 
It won't be 75 degrees tonight. Oh, and on the same vein as uh, this in reach, there was another story. So I'm with a group of these kids, you know, 30 years old, they're kids. And uh, we were walking down a canyon, and of course they all got their phones and do whatever they, whatever kids do with phones, which is most everything. And they all get in a huddle and they're like, you know, then start walking around and they're holding their phones up. What are you guys doing? I said, well, we can't see the map or, you know, we lost connection. And we said, well, um, here's the map. You want to, just, you want to use this? Oh, wow, that's so cool. I'm so glad you brought that. Before I do a walk, a lot of research goes, goes into it. And I think that it's important in the preparation. Uh, don't count on anybody. Said, count on yourself. Um, you know, own the day. So you know where you're going. You, what I do here is I just print out from Google Map and maybe I'll put some coordinates on it where I think I can park the car and maybe the destination. And I print that out and send my pack. If something happens to the GPS through a phone, I still have this. If I lose my GPS that has a coordinates in it, I can hand this to somebody that does have a GPS and they can put the coordinates in it. And it's just part of the preparation. Um, you know, know where you're going and, and prepare for the walk. What else? Mm, well, I got some binoculars. And... Uh, no, I got this in there, and a headlamp. Now, when it gets dark, these can be handy. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much what I have. And again, I will add a Gore-Tex down jacket if the day's gonna be longer. And, uh, and or, um, and I need more water and maybe some more food. So now I'd like to real quickly introduce you to what we call the old crap pack. So let me get that out. Okay. I know. Okay. You're wondering what in the heck is an old crap pack? That's when uh, you're out in the Thule's and you fall down and you realize something's wrong and you can no longer walk or like I say, there's a flash flood and you can't get back, whatever the reason. And um, you say, ah, oh, crap. So you go get the old crap pack. You know, you can't get, if it's flooding, you can't get across it. But if somebody gets hurt, the plan is to retrieve the old crap pack from the Jeep or truck or car. So we have talked about this on many occasions and it's always a good, good conversation to have with the group of people that you walk with. If something does happen, you know, what's the plan? So our plan is that we make somebody as comfortable as possible, hit the SOS, make sure that somebody's on their way. And um, if it's kind of looking like it might be a uh, spend the night deal, go retrieve the old crap pack or at least put this stuff in your pack and head back down. So after the SOS and everything has been done, you'd go to the car and get some more gear. So in here is a sleeping bag, which I don't have in here right now because it's hanging in the closet so it can loft out. But then we have a bivy sack that you can put the sleeping bag in. It's a Gore-Tex, you know, waterproof bivy sack. And a couple bowls. And uh, a little towel. And a knife fork. And a stove and a whole whole bunch of freeze-dried meals probably ought to update that sometime soon a sleeping pad some fuel for the stove 
And in this side, I think it's a water purification system. And in the back of the car is also a whole case of water. So you can load all that stuff up in the, in the pack and return to this person and help them get comfortable and insulated from the ground, start a fire if necessary, cook some food up. I've got a, uh, this comes from the rescue team again, this little thing of smoke. When a uh, helicopter's coming in, if it happens, nobody else happens to be there and it's trying to land the direction of the wind is really important in a couple flares to announce where you're at. So that is pretty much it. Um, this also serves another purpose that I don't know if you've, this has ever happened to you, but it certainly happened to me. You get back to the car and you put the keys in the ignition and it doesn't start for whatever reason. Battery dead or maybe you're driving down a road and you pop a hole in your oil can or something. And out where we usually walk, there's no cell service. And of course we can text through satellite with our um, Garmin but you may end up having to wait. So here's supper and sleeping bags so that you can share that and stay nice and warm and cozy. Um, so it's really, again, just preparing for that unexpected night out. It's that simple. Well, I hope this helped you out a little bit. Um, it's uh, it's uh, fun to share some of the some of the stories. I've had, uh, I've had a lot of fun out there. And so in closing, I'll say this. When I was learning to fly, uh, a pilot told me that we, we start off with two bags. One is a bag of luck and it's full. The other is the bag of experience and it's empty. And the, <laughs> this is so true with so many things. So the idea is to fill up the bag of experience before the bag of luck runs out. And it's true with, like I say, it's, it's true with scuba diving, it's true with rock climbing, ice climbing, um, jumping out of an airplane, running rivers. And, and so it takes some time to fill that bag of experience up. But what you can do in the meantime is when you go out there, be prepared, do your homework so you know where you're going, and at least kind of get an idea of what to expect. So I hope this helps you out. Uh, really appreciate you watching. Like I always say, until next time, GoPro, stop recording.